And she went and hired a private investigator to find out about him because she didn't want to marry somebody that would hurt herself or her kids. There was no record as the church protected the perpetrator. That's what that just has to change. You know, President Nelson, you have so much power in your hands. You, you with as the prophets here and revelator for the church and the president, and you're where, uh, where the, the debate ends when you speak. And you know that you have great power to change the culture, not just the policy of the church, but I say just as important as the the, the culture. And that is going to be done not through a, a, a one talk saying, "Hey, we're against abuse," and you've had a few of those. They look completely attorney written. You know, there's an old saying, talk is cheap, President Nelson. And to have a little talk and say, hey, you know, I mean, although I, there, you've had some good ones. Uthdorf, stop it, talk. That was a really good one, actually. I like that one. You know, so you've had some good talks, but we know that talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. And you know that, President Nelson. You're, you're an experienced man, and a wise man in, in, in a lot of regards. What I'd like you to do and is what I asked them to do when I had those two years of meetings with the local leaders and the area leaders, is I asked them to change the culture. And in doing so, I mean, you have a lesson every year on the law of chastity. You have it in the workbook every year. You have a lesson on uh, the word of wisdom every year. And you have all kinds of lessons on things that we shouldn't be doing. I asked them to make just one, just one week a year where the saints, the people that you lead, my family, my friend, my heritage and culture, talk about abuse and the great harm that comes from that. And, and start to include that we, as Latter-day Saints, we don't tolerate abuse and make it a bigger part of the culture. Because right now, it's not really a serious part of the culture. Did you know that when I was doing that exit interview with that bishop, you know, I, and I told him the reason why is because I, I specifically asked you guys to make my children safe, and they refused. Uh, that's why I left. But I told that to the bishop during the exit interview, and that was the reason I left. And he said, uh, him and his counselor said, uh, Brother Bressy, they were talking something about coming from a farm or something. And then he went on to say, uh, we don't think there should be any abuse prevention policy because we don't want our children to live in a bubble. So this is what I was told. Now, th these are men, the very men, mind you, that were supposed to be keeping my son safe. They were the leaders of my son's youth organization while he was being abused and you guys promoted him to bishop and now he tells me that he don't think abuse policy is needed because they don't want the kids to be living in a bubble now this bishop is a, a, an ignorant man he's a confused man he's a lazy learner he's not done the research and how many you know this has got to change you know you want you president nelson have the power to make that mindset change to let everybody know that it is serious. Now, you want the church to be a sanctuary, not a place of a bubble. You know, you want it to be safe. This is wrong. President Nelson, use your power to change the culture. Include one lesson a year on abuse. Describe how harmful abuse is to the mental health and to the life of children, their whole future, as I described earlier. Make when people, you, they hear about somebody smoking a cigarette or drinking a coffee, whoa, this is a big deal, whoa, this is a, a conversation, a, a heated conversation, or somebody, you know, built a lot of chastity, boy, there's an issue there, there's a conversation, and the, the whole ward's in on that one, but there's not the same urgency on abuse, there's just not, there's none at all, actually, it's, it's in the culture, the Mormon people have a cultural problem, and is it completely your fault, President Nelson? No, it's not, because you, you've not been there the whole time. This is something that goes way back decades. Uh, we've had a lot of lazy learners leaving this church, you know, and that you're just the lightest one, and I'm, I'm hoping that you'll be the first to change that and make it a culture of, of protecting children. Make it, it's not even a legal issue at that point. It's simply making people say, culturally, lessons, instructing. And if, if you're not going to do it, then I'm going to be talking to Elder Oaks, or President Oaks next. Come on. You're next. Change the culture. But why don't you why don't you do that first? We don't have time to wait because while we're waiting for you to think about this, another child's going to die. I promise you. I I know myself. People I know personally are attempting suicide. Kids are attempting suicide. You can do better. You must do better, better, President Nelson. We're here to protect children from the abuse you're bringing. You're allowing to come to children. You must do better. But anyways, I mean, got something else to say. 
I'm you're good. Um, I wanted to add another term that apostates are called. How about lax disciple? A disciple is a father. So think of the Good Samaritan and the, the victim by the side of the road. Would you rather keep ritual purity than help the victim by the side of the road? Um, how about the lost coin, the lost sheep, and the lost son? This is what you are losing by being a lax disciple. I believe that our church, well, it's not my church, but it's mine. But if the Mormon church wants to survive, they must change. Katie, it's, it is still your church. It's your, your heritage. It's your, your people. It, you know, although you're not a, on the rolls of the church, it's still your heritage. It's still your ancestors. It's your, your, your friends, your, your family, your you know, just because you're not on the rolls of the church, we got to do something about this divide as soon as your name's not officially on the rolls of the church or no longer part of the community. This is divisive. You know, a big part of this week is about damaged mental health. And there's two big deals in man mental health and, and, and precursor to suicide. Those two things are one is uh, a damaged connectedness. You start damaging a person's connectedness, you're putting them on the path to suicide. This is just a stated fact, okay? And the second huge contributor to suicide, two big ones, and that's what this week's about, is about mental health, and that is when you start damaging someone's sense of worth, extremely harmful to their mental health. And when a child's abused and that abuse is covered up, those two things together are extremely harmful to mental health, extremely. You can do better, President Nelson. You're damaging mental health because you're, not, you're damaging connectedness when a child gets abused, and then you're also damaging their sense of worth. Come on, you can do better. We want to do better. We must do better as a community. You are a Mormon girl. Still, somewhere, although your name's not on the record, I'm still a Mormon boy. Somewhere, it's my heritage. Okay. Let me, okay, go ahead. Let me correct you. All right. I believe in the higher power. Okay. And um, just as I was educated, too, as a Mormon, I, I take a lot of my roots from Judeo-Christian teachings as I was taught in church. And today is Rosh Hashanah, Shabbat it is the Jewish New Year, and for the next 10 days is the High Holy Day that ends in Yom Kippur. I think that's why the church has its general conferences in spring and fall during these traditional holy days. A shofar is blown when the, when, well, last night at sunset is when, when it actually happens because that's how the days were actually just sunset, sunset. So when the dawn came this morning in Jerusalem, a man blew a shofar. Um, and there's a special pattern about it and a special meaning to it. It's calling the world to recognize the sovereignty of God and to obey his laws and do better. Um, apples and honey are eating, eating common grants are eating. Please don't let another generation go by. I mean, it started with Manny Alger, let's get real. And it was tolerated. And Helen Markham, and it was tolerated. Please stop. Please stop in my lifetime. Stop it now. One thing that I'd like to say is that